Hi, you guys, and welcome to my next mindfulness series, Tantric Tuesdays. So excited to roll this topic out and discuss and play with you about this topic. It's important and it can enrich us and feed us and help us soak into desire and joy and orgasmic states and ecstasy. And it can be a rich, lush resource for daily boosts of energy and creativity. So why are we not playing in this area? <laughs> Let's start. <laughs> so thanks for joining me for this series. What is this series about? So I named this purposely Tantric Tuesdays because when I say the word Tantra or Tantric, the next thing that comes to people's mind usually is sex. And in one respect, you're right. That is an area or limb or part of the practice of Tantric. In another respect, that's just the tip of the iceberg to the practice of tantric yoga, which is the oldest practice of yoga on the globe. We know this because we found artifacts of Shiva and Shakti all over the globe in different places. People practice this form of ancient yoga. And what it means literally translated tantric yoga is to weave or to loom. So we weave or to loom this conscious area of our life in and this one and this one. Eventually we have this beautiful, rich, lush tapestry put together this is our life of, of being authentic and mindful and enriched in all these areas of our life. When you feed one area like mindfulness and meditation, what I've noticed is it doesn't stay in that one area of your life. It just bleeds over in this area. Finances gets conscious and, and you start to become more aware and enlightened in that area and your sex and connections become more enlightened and you become more aware in that area and spirituality and here and here and here. And so what we're finding us at meditators, I've committed for the last like five years to a, a meditative practice of an hour to two hours a day. And I go on a deep retreats, 10 day sits a couple of times a year. And I'm committed to this practice of meditation. And what myself and other meditators have found is that this this building this area up makes, oh my gosh, our connections, intimate connections and sex and sexuality. You get to come into these delicious meditative states, those orgasmic states, and you get to ride those waves for days and they fill your energy up and your creativity gets boosted. Um, and it just, it's a beautiful place to play. <laughs> and so if you think in terms of, look at all the things that we get, um, all the benefits that come from meditation, right? Less stress, more connection to your central nervous system and your sensorial system. Your pre-processing power is, is expanded to richer, deeper places. Your present moment is awareness is you get to play in that land a little bit more. Um, all the things, you know, you get better sleep, you have better, you make more better decisions. You do, like there are so many helpful things and so many benefits from it. Now I want you to think about what if I could bring all those benefits and just add insects and in connection and in intimacy. So I am more conscious and aware and present and able to tap into my sense systems and play in the sensations in my body. And I'm able to slow down and come into the present moment. And I'm able to sip this moment in and, and be my most authentic self and have informed consent. What if I could take all of those benefits of my meditative practice and put them into my sexual connections and practices? Yes. Haha. <laughs> Super fun. Because where we're at right now with sex and connection is really rudimentary. We're really kind of juvenile and rudimentary about it. Our sex education system across the globe, the way we look at connection and marriage and monogamy and this whole track of only using your sexual or life force creative energy when you're going to attract one partner and then maybe when you want to have babies. We're wasting, like we're we're not tapping into that place we can live in 24-7. And this is what, you know, monks, Buddhas, Arhats learned. So that's kind of the evolutionary path. You get deep and rich and lush and you learn to live in this uh, state of orgasm, empty self or no self, and then maybe drop out and become a monk. And then you become celibate because you know, okay, I've evolved past my sexual evolution path. Um, or you become a Buddha or an Arhat. 
and you realize that you can just within yourself tap in your own inner alchemy and chemistry and inner yin yang and have that sweet spot balance of just living in that state of orgasm all the time so for them they maybe have evolved beyond the physical sexual connections with other people but we haven't you haven't i haven't we're still householders we live in this world <laughs> so if you're watching this video i'm assuming it's because you're interested because you have sex or connection on some level with your partner um, or want it or want to increase it and make it better you know so we're in this place playing in this land so let's stop doing it in a haphazardly rudimentary archaic manner let's infuse some consciousness into it and this isn't going to be a course about you know here's five sex sexual positions you can to boost your uh intimate connections or how to get a man or keep a man or how to find a woman or like that's rudimentary like down here we're gonna play in places that are like informed consent being in your body moment to moment ebbing and flowing playing on that resilient edge of resistance of touch and how to feel that and connect and being constantly whether you're with your partner and there's new relationship energy off the charts that makes you go crazy or you've old relationship energy like being able to play in those states of energy so it's like this constant feed of delicious creative energy that you get to play in with your partners and with yourself and learning to connect to metta a huge component of any meditative practice of self-love and compassion and learning to figure out your own self having a self inquiry and knowledge mechanism of what are my hang-ups and hiccups about sex and intimacy and connection and are they really valid and can i process through them and should i look at them yes and see are they productive and and to inquire about them at the level of the mind and at the level of the body through the sensation practice because um, at the end of the day it doesn't really matter you know what your sexual preference is what your desires or fetishes are or what you like or what you think you want to explore wouldn't it be delicious if you could explore all of those places with this lush rich intimate present moment confidence and you let go of the shame and the fear and the doubt and whatever hiccups you have about sex and connection <laughs> so that when you came to those places of desire you you were in, able to get intimate and say i do want to try this or i want to play in this area or i like that and you're and you have the baseline to play in that area fireworks happen in that area because you have built the base of consciousness to be able to play there we're going to look at topics like yin yang yin and yang energy and playing in the space of sexual energy and in getting out of things like tit for tat or posturing in sex getting out of our head in sex getting into our body in sex and having tools helpful tools that are useful i'm going to talk about uh, pornography how that has shaped the sexual landscape and i'm going to talk to you about sex toys and um, how those shape our energy in sex and how those have affected our energy in sex there is a whole world you guys out here of tools and toys that we can play with that really are our vedically sound helpful useful tools if we play them. we're still in the stages in the phases with sex and sexuality and intimacy unconsciously where you've been given like the plastic recorder to play and you're kind of plunking along and it's rudimentary on the notes and that's how you play in the realm of sex and sexuality when it could be that you have um, a beautiful instrument that you're playing that's the ranges and the notes on this instrument versus your plastic recorder are like tenfold and you feel the weight of the instrument and you connect with that and you learn how you've learned how to play it like a master <laughs> um, so that's where we're going with this that's what this course is about giving you those tools to play in that range and <laughs> and really enjoy this area uh, it is an adult content uh, video series so if you are not a grown-ass adult or can't act like a grown-ass adult you probably don't want to participate in this that's your journey that's your decision that's your informed consent which is 
The next topic we're going to cover, the first topic in this series is informed consent. And I'm going to talk to you about it in three ways, informed consent between teacher and student and between you and this practice, um, what that looks like, um, and informed consent with yourself moment to moment so that you can give informed consent to another human being to have a, an interaction of intimacy or sex. Um, so super excited about sharing this topic with you guys. It's been such a lush, rich resource to play in, and I am going to share tons of teachers and guides with you. There are some really good people out here that have been studying this topic and um, mm, lush resources. So have a fabulous day. I look forward to next week. Tantric Tuesdays. Yay! Namaste.